Welcome to the California State University webinar. Today, 10,000 Degrees is gonna help you to understand how to complete this application for California State Universities. But before we jump into the application, we wanna go over some eligibility points. If you have a 2.5 GPA, you can and should apply to the California State University system. For students who have a 2.0 to a 2.4, can and should apply as well, but other factors will need to be considered. The California State Universities will reach out to these students who apply. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Liz Perez. I am the program manager for North Sonoma and Sonoma Valley. Um, we're really happy to go over Cal State Apply with you. So for the purpose of this um, presentation, we have already done some of the steps ahead of time, but we will go um, ahead and show you the first part, which is um, how to apply and how to get started. So we do want to make sure that you know that you are applying for the fall 2021 term. Um, and then once you have hit that, it will take you to um, creating an account. So you would just hit create an account and that's basically just you creating a username, your password, and you will have to accept the terms and conditions that CSU Apply or Cal State Apply has um, posted on there for you. Once that has been created, you log in and something like this on our screen will pop up extended profile. On here, you will indicate the degree of your goal, which is your first bachelor's degree. You will also indicate that you will be graduating from high school as a senior. And the very important part is that if you took community college courses and you want to add those onto this application, you do have to select yes as an option here in the extended profile. If you put no, it will not give you that option in your application to actually put that information. Um, you can always go back and change it, but just know that that might be the reason why it's not popping up. So if you took community college classes, make sure you mark them as yes here. Okay, and then once you have done this, it will take you to add a program. What that means is you're adding the CSU campus that you want to start with. So on here, um, you would select one campus and we will have an example of San Francisco. You wanna make sure that you're actually searching because if you go off of what was already on there, it was all Bakersfield. So if you're not interested in applying to Bakersfield, please make the change. Or if not, you're applying to Bakersfield. Um, so San Francisco, and then you would select a major. All majors are in alphabetical order. So you can select the one of your interest. If you are undeclared, undecided, that is an option on there as well. <laughs> So we have selected one, and then this would then have us move on to your actual application. The application will look like this. There's four different parts to it. Um, these are called the different tiles. Each tile is a section within it. It has more information that you must input into the application. Um, as you see on here, and I mentioned, we have already pre-filled out most of this information. So it's all green, which means that it's complete. Um, if by any chance something is missing, it will not be green on your side. So just make sure it all turns green for you to be able to, to submit your application. Um, yeah, so I think this is basically what is on for the tiles. Um, and we will get started into going into each one of them. Hello everyone, my name is Gladys Cortez Fajardo. I'm the program manager for the Petaluma and West Mar Marin region. Um, uh, today we'll, I will be covering the personal information section, which is the section that we recommend you start at. A lot of the information on the personal information section is uh, self-explanatory, so we will be skipping through those sections and that will be the first three, um, the release of statement, biographic information and contact information. Um, but the one that we want to start off to highlight is the citizenship, citizenship and residency information. In this section, if you are not a US citizen, you have the option of selecting other options. 
Uh, for example, if you're a permanent resident and have a green card, you can select that and it will ask for your uh, country of citizenship and other information. Uh, for our undocumented students, you want to select none and that will also allow you to select your country of citizenship. One thing to keep in mind, there, are, there is US citizenship question and also a California residency question. These are talking about two different things. Uh, for example, our undocumented students would put none for US citizenship, but they, are, they can still be eligible for California residency if you've lived in California for a year or more. If you have, in that case, you would claim yes, uh, I am a California resident. Uh, but if you have not lived in California continuously since your birth, you would select no and just provide the date when you started living in California. The next section we wanna highlight is the parent and guardian information. You wanna make sure that you're adding both uh, guardians if you have two, or if you only have one guardian, go ahead and just put one guardian. Under other information, you will be asked to provide your social security number, but if you do not have one, you can go ahead and click no and just acknowledge, select yes, I acknowledge that I do not have a social security number. This last section is very, very important to make sure that you are adding uh, correct information and not estimates because this financial and parent information is the information that will be used to determine whether you're eligible for the fee waiver, which gives you up to four free applications. So on here, make sure that you select, you read through these questions, dependency questions, and if you, you can say yes to any of them, you would select one or more of the above statements apply to me, which would mean that you are an independent student. Uh, but a lot of our students are dependent students, so they would select none, and then provide that dependent household size um, this information should match what's in your FAFSA or California Dream Act. So if you already have done that, this will be a little bit easier for you to fill out. Then next under dependent income information, the first question is asking about adjusted gross income for your family, which can be found in your 2019 taxes on line, on line 8B. One thing to keep in mind is that they're also asking you for any on tax income information. Sometimes students get confused and put the same number from up here in the second line, but it's okay to put zero. A lot of the times this line is going to be zero, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to someone at 10,000 degrees and they can help clarify, clarify if you have any information that you need to provide on here. If you're interested in being considered for on-campus housing, this is also where you would select that and finish up the section with your parent and guardian education levels. And now we will move on to filling out your academic history. Thank you, Gladys. Great, so everyone, I'm Rondell Gibson. I am the manager for Southern Marin and Central Marin, and today I'm gonna to help you to understand the academic history. Now, there are many sections to this, to this tile, um, just as Liz has explained earlier. But first, I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to start at the top and work our way through. It's pretty quick. So let's start with high school attendance. Here is where we're going to list the high school that we are currently enrolled in. Now, some of us have attended more than one high school, and we will need to list those high schools in the order attended. But for me, I only will say that I attended one high school, and today that is going to be Elsie Allen. So as you see, we have listed it here. But for instance, if we had not listed it, we would click Add High School. And when we add our high school, we're going to start with the date that we started on our first day, which for us was August and for 2017, and then the year that we will finish, which will be June 2021. Now, this section, we should only be putting our high school in, not any college attended courses. We're going to do that next. So as you see here, once again, we only put our high school. So let's continue with college attended. Some of our students are attending college at the same time as attending high school courses, and then some of our students have taken college courses over the summer only. But this section is where you would add that college. So for us today, we're going to say that we attended or that we did attend Santa Rosa Junior College. So that would go here, and this is going to be key for later on. We're going to see where we input our courses. So let's keep moving now. All right, so we have our high school courses here, and we need to begin inputting our high school courses 
um, in order. So we're going to start and we can start with eighth grade essentially. So with eighth grade, um, we're going to show you by adding um, a grade level here. As you see from our drop down, we will select eighth grade. And now we're going to go over to, first we're going to click OK. Sorry, scrolling down. We're then going to click semester. We're going to, this is not going to populate our middle school. School is going to populate our high school. Here, this is correct. So click that. And then we're going to move over to what would be the year we took for freshman year, 2017, 2018. Now we're gonna do this for the case of those students who have taken algebra or geometry in their eighth grade year. And we're gonna list them by semester, but we have to type in the course exactly how it is on our transcript. So if you noticed, as I began to type ALG, it started to auto-populate some choices. So I'm gonna click algebra 1P, and then it has course type. And here, I'm gonna put none. And then I'm gonna move over to my first semester, which will be fall. And I'm gonna put that course grade that is listed on my transcript. And for me, that is a B. Now I'm listing my spring semester as a B as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click the checkbox or check. And then that's gonna input my eighth grade. So if I've taken algebra or even a foreign language like Spanish or Cantonese or any of those foreign languages, we want, also can put that here as well. So if you've taken a foreign language in eighth grade, that can be inputted as well, following the same method we just chose. Um, following that, now let's go ahead and I can show you how we put our ninth grade here. And we're gonna show you that we put it based off um, the level of English that we we've taken, our math and so on. You notice that they're listed by fall and spring. So as we scroll up, you'll notice that it begins to list our 10th grade, and our 11th grade. Now we've already taken, um, we already taken the chance to put these grades in so we can show you all how this should look with a uh, once you complete this. All right, let's take a look at 11th grade. So last, last school year, many of us had the shelter in place. All of us had the shelter in place and schools changed how they were doing their grading systems. Now each school is gonna be different, but we wanna show you an example. Now, for instance, the school that I was working with last year or doing pass, no pass. So let's click on the pencil and we'll notice that only second semester was affected. So here we're gonna show you, instead of putting a grade down, we're gonna go ahead and say, some of you may have be able to do no pass or pass, which would be the equivalent of credit, no credit. Now this should only be for spring semester. So now let's go ahead and move forward. Now, what I want to point out here is that in our 12th grade, you'll notice that, or you should, you should notice that we don't have grades because we get grades via semester, by the end of semester or the end of the quarter. So here for every class that we're currently taking for our fall semester in our 12th grade, every course should be listed as in progress. All right, and then for our courses for the spring semester in our 12th grade, meaning our senior year, they should be planned. Now, this is because we plan on taking these courses and the colleges know that and they will ask for you to send their transcript, your transcript later to prove that you successfully passed these courses. All right. So we're going to thank you for all viewing that. And now we're going to continue to move on so you can see um, how we input our college coursework. So for our students who have done concurrent enrollment or have taken summer school earlier, I mentioned that you had to put down the college community college that you had taken. Here is where we're gonna put down any courses that we had taken. So as you noticed here, we would need to, we would need to click uh, on edit, or um, sorry, not, not edit, but we would, in, yeah, sorry, edit. Um, and here's where you'll notice the course that we have taken. Now you can add any additional courses. If you've taken more than one course, then you would have to add that in individually. If you've taken two courses, you'll add that in as well. And just as you had done for your high school courses, um, what entering your grades, you'll need to do the same for your college courses. Rem now, just a reminder, this is only for our students who have taken concurrent enrollment or taken summer school at a local community college. All right, so I think we're safe to move on and we're gonna move down to A through G matching. This is new this year and this is great because it allows us to see which courses um, we've taken and if they've met all of the eligibility requirements for the California State University. And as you can see here, we've met all of our requirements, at least to the minimum. So once you've checked to make sure that you've, you have all your requirements, 
then you can continue to move on. But for any student who has not met the requirements or they feel that there's some sort of discrepancy, please reach out to your counselor in your high school or someone here at 10,000 degrees. All right, so now I just wanna point out one more section and that is the standardized test. Now, many of you don't freak out, know that you do not have to take an ACT or an SAT. Now, if you've taken one and you want to supply those scores, you can, it's totally optional. But the big thing we wanna show you is that many of you are taking AP or will take AP um, and have passed with a, with a three or greater. So here's where we would put our AP testing scores or we would put a date that we're taking in the future. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. So how about we click on the, on the, uh, on the edit symbol here, the pencil. So we're gonna show you, for instance, you have AP exam first, you would click the AP exam that you're taking. For us, we took art. And now below we have, have you already taken this? For anybody who's taking this in the future, they would say yes. And then below that, you can put your future date that you plan on taking this if you, do, if you have not already taken one. So this is for those who are taking the test this coming, uh, this coming May. All right, so then you would put save your information and you would be all set to go and this tile should be done. For any questions on AP testing, please ask your counselor or someone here at 10,000 degrees. Thank you. Now we're gonna re um, go back to our tiles to show you by clicking our application. All right, now moving on to the supporting information section. So under this section, you have the educational program and work experience. So unlike other applications, some of the questions that they ask about your program involvements in clubs and things like that to, are a little bit more in general. The first question that comes up and that a lot of students are involved in is programs like AVID. So if you were enrolled in AVID at all during your high school career, even if you were, um, even if you were in, in middle school, some middle schools have it, you would say, select yes and put the total amount of years that you were in it. Uh, but remember that the total amount of years only counts the high school the amount of high school years that you were in it, whether that was one, two, three, or the complete four years. Then if you were a part of any of these other educational programs, you would go ahead and select yes or no. And then at the bottom where it asks if you were a part of any other programs, you can all, if you're a part of the 10,000 Degrees Institute program, can select yes, uh, because 10,000 Degrees Institute is an educational program. Um, and for the total amount of years that you participated in it, you can select two years because by the time that you will be going to college, you would be in our program for two years. Then below, you can give information about your work. So if you've worked during high school, you can give an estimate of how many hours you worked per week. And it's asking for the most recent work that you've done. So in the last 36 months. And then the question below asks if 25% of your work is related to your major of interest. It's okay if it's not, you can just select no. And lastly, this is where you would report the total amount of hours per week that you spent doing all of that extracurricular work or activities. This can include clubs, sports, anything else that you do that takes up time on your day that can tell more about what you do outside of your academics. So for this example, we're giving an assignment of six to 10 hours per week. And if you had any leadership roles, for example, if you were the president of a club or you were um, had a leadership position in your sport team, you can select yes and save and continue. All right, now we come to the second portion of the section, which is the Educational Opportunity Program application. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you're select, which we recommend that you all apply, and if you select yes, you will have to fill out this whole section in one sitting. So it is important that you have the essays ready for you to, to paste. So write them in a Google Doc, and then once you're ready to complete the section, you can come back and paste them on here. You can also select yes, and I will ret return to complete the EOP questions. So you can move on to different sections if you are not ready to submit this section just yet, 
but we do want to remind you that you do have to, we recommend that you submit this section at the same time as you submit the CSU application. So that would be by November 30th. Okay, so now we are under the last tile, which is program materials. So under this tile, you would have the CSU campuses that you have selected as wanting to apply to and the majors you have indicated. Um, so they will be on here. Some of your campuses might request additional materials, documents for you to submit. Um, so it would be all listed on here. So yeah, for example, Sonoma State asks for additional documents, which we opted not to, but um, it was not required um, optional documents and these were transcripts. So if you don't want to submit those, that is fine. There is a section at the bottom where you can just select, I'm not adding any documents, but there will be some that are required and you just have to make sure that you're checking on those. Um, and um, also knowing that for any students that might have selected a major that's impacted, they will most likely have additional documents that you have to submit. And um, noting that if you did select one of the majors that is impacted, it might ask you to add an alternative major and that's okay. Um, it will all be listed on here once you have selected those. So yeah, I think that's it for this section, oh, I did want to talk about, sorry, about um, the supplemental factors that Rondell had mentioned initially when we started. Um, for the students that do have a GPA from 2.0 to 2.49, um, the schools that you apply to might reach out to you and ask for some of these supplemental factors. Um, so just make sure that once you submit your CSU application, your Cal State Apply application that um, you are checking your portal frequently, not even if you have a 2.0 to 2.49, everyone should be checking it. But if you do sp especially, please be checking it because the schools might reach out to you to um, submit additional supplemental factors that will determine whether you get into the school or not. Um, some of those that um, Cal State Apply has reached out to us and let us know that those can be courses that are exceeding the minimum A through G um, eligibility courses. So when you saw in your A through G matching, if you had maybe more math than what was required, they'll look at that. If you had more art classes than what was required, more language classes than what was required, they'll take a look at all those. Um, they will also be taking a look at your household income. That is also part of your application, but if they do need additional information on that, they will be reaching out to you. Um, the extracurricular involvement that was just mentioned, um, that is a big Supplemental factor, I know it was noted on the application, but they might be asking for more detailed information on that. And um, your work experience also, where did you work? Um, what kind of, what did you do in your job? What you learned, um, specific stuff like that. So they'll be reaching out directly to the students um, to be able to, to gather that information to determine whether you are um, accepted into the CSU or not. So again, just make sure you check your portals for, for any um, additional information that is requested by any of the CSUs you apply to. All right. And then moving on that you do need to do is submit your application. So um, once you go on to here, it will have all the different CSUs that you've selected and the majors. Um, there is an area for you to check if you were eligible for those fee waivers. So if you see check my fee waiver status, you can click on there. And um, if we look in the big rectangle, it says your available application fee waivers per term. So we were awarded four out of four. And, and um, yeah, so we're getting four applications that we can submit and at no cost. Um, you can always come into this section and check if you were eligible for the fee waivers, even if you're not done, but just to double check and see where you would be at with that. Um, and then 
Yeah, and then you would just submit and it would not have you have to pay that full total fee. Um, some quick tips before we go, just wanted to make sure that you are um, indicating your full name when you are submitting your application. Make sure you're putting your full name on there um, because it has to be matching with records that are at the school, uh, financial aid as well. So just make sure you put your full name on all your applications, um, your correct emails, put emails that are not school emails, please, um, and um, have a document where you're keeping track of your username and passwords because it's important to have all that so it's not another step that you need to redo each time. And yeah, I think that is it for now. Thank you all for taking a look at this video. I hope it is helpful. If you do come across any questions please reach out to someone in 10,000 degrees. We are more than happy to guide you through the process. Please reach out to anyone in 10,000 degrees before you submit any of your applications. Um, we're more than happy to take a look and make sure everything seems correct um, because once we have submitted, we can't really go back and make the changes. Um, it will be a little bit harder. So if we get it all done and checked out before, even better. Um, so thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate the time of you taking to watch this video and let us know if you have any questions.